This town's gone to zombie takeout. Hello and welcome to episode 418 of Zombie Takeout, the B-Movie and Cult Movie Podcast. I'm John. And hello, I'm Scotto. And before we get to this week's movie, I just wanted to talk about this for a minute. Um, I decided over the weekend to sign up for HBO Max again. Um, I signed up around the time we reviewed Hairspray. Um, in fact, that was the one thing I had tried to watch on it at the time, and it froze about a half hour into the film, and I just canceled immediately. Um, but we were talking about it last week, and you kind of talked me into it. Well, you talked me into it plus... I wasn't I've been really hearing a hard sell on it either. I was just no, like, no. Eh, you know, I think I was there's some Turner classic movies on there and yeah. a couple of weird things. And I and I think I had already been pondering it, and I, because I had heard amazing things about Lovecraft Country. Oh, I haven't seen that yet. And um, uh, Watchmen. Um, so I checked out Watchmen, which is very intense. It's going to take me a while to catch up on that. There's a lot to get. It. There's a lot to deal with. Um, Lovecraft Country, Country is fucking brilliant if you oh, nice. have hbo max and are at all into horror you need to watch it um i also watched i oh, watched a full episode of the, um last week tonight which it, for the first time in quite a while oh yeah because they put <laughs> I, the main I, story on youtube and that's all i've been I, watching I've been for watching a while. that regularly i don't really i really don't miss a, a week of that um so i've all i've been seeing is the main story which is the best part of the show but it was nice to see a full episode you know the two bits they do before then I also watched a movie that actually, in a lot of ways, reminded me of what we're reviewing this week. Um, Cowboys and Aliens. Oh. Good cast. Interesting concept. Really good effects. Well shot. The script was just remarkably mediocre. (laughs) And, of course, that very nicely brings us to this week's movie, which is from 2002. Reign of Fire. Of course, that brings us to the impromptu plot summary, sponsored by On the Nose Music. Do you want to give your audience exactly what they expect at key moments in your film? Then try On the Nose Music, featuring songs like Celebration, Walking in Memphis, Born to Run, The Final Countdown, and of course, Fire, either the Jimi Hendrix or the Dennis Young version. That's On the Nose Music for all of your soundtrack needs. Try it in your next film. No one's going to use the Dennis Young version. <laughs> <laughs> We have a thing planned for the hearing where Scott's going to hear that. The Dennis Young version of Jimi Hendrix's Fire live on the air. <sighs> you might want to tune in this week to get it, yeah. to hear his reaction. It's Looking worse than you think to it is. drill into my skull to get me <laughs> out of doing it. Uh, and also brought to you by one busy happy dragon. Though maybe fertilizing thousands of eggs isn't all it's um, <clears throat> cracked up to be. I'm kind of flashing back to that old sitcom trope of the couple who's trying to conceive and eventually they get really tired of fucking. I mean, he was everywhere, man. He was he was all over the world, apparently, this one, one Although dragon. they are an egg-laying race, so, you know, it, it's not as much fun. Uh, exactly. Maybe so. he doesn't... So one busy dragon is yeah. a... The so imagine, the so it, it would get even more tiring than if it was, you know, fun. <laughs> All right, so we begin with me thinking I've started the wrong movie because, <laughs> like, wait, they're in like uh, present day London. Well, actually, about twelve years ago, London. Well, right at the time, yeah. present day London, I think. Yeah, probably. Well, no, slightly future. Two thousand two was the movie. It was two thousand eight. Oh yeah, I thought it was like 03 that they were there. All right, so there. Um, in I, the I saw the newspaper in London, and um, he uh, they they have a construction site that obey disobeys any uh, sort of uh, mm-hmm. safety precautions because they let the the person's kid come down to visit. And I mean, come on, I guess if you were a kid. You'd want to take a visit down into the mine at least once. Well, I mean, but you'd it looked want like a to, regular but thing. Allowing him to, um, <laughs> you know, when so, you're joking about like giving him a cigarette, yeah, uh, you know, open flames and shit like that there too. Yeah, in a, in um, a tunnel, yeah. So the but the point is that they are. Um, I don't think they were miners. I thought there was a construction yeah, thing. They, and were, they were digging just... a tunnel, adding to the underground. 
Right, they were digging a tunnel, and uh, boy, they um, they stumbled upon something they should not have stumbled upon. Uh, it's an empty chamber, a void. That would be a busy and, dragon. And within the void was a sleeping dragon that they woke up. Um, or assume to be course, busy dragon. Thing, yes, things get really uh, bad quickly. Uh, it pretty much unleashes a uh, global cataclysm um, because these dragons multiplied really quickly. Uh, I guess he had you know, wasted time, so he was making up for lost Well, And he had time. to have had company in there or elsewhere for them to populate at all. True. You know, I do wonder about that. He couldn't like, have been where... the only one. Where did the other dragons come from if they had one dragon and then they had a bunch? With all That's of the exposition question. in this film, they didn't cover that. Right. Like, the dragon had to have found other, you know, sleeping dragons to have woken up to have brought out. Um, well, they, what they pretty much say, and uh, in, in all that exposition, though, was that the dinosaurs were really killed off by these dragons. That was clever. I enjoyed that. And, uh, yeah, because I always think about that. Like, we make the assumption that, you know, an asteroid came and killed well, off we the have dinosaurs. We've good evidence for the asteroid theory. But of, I course, like... of course we do. We've got the Gulf of Mexico. <laughs> yeah. But I like whenever any film has an alternative idea for a fictional idea. It's, it's interesting. As a kid, I came up with the idea of they were actually an advanced technological race, mm -hmm. and it was really a nuclear war. Ah, interesting. <laughs> And that destroyed all evidence of tech, greater technology, and uh, so, you know the main impact was where can, we think the meteor so crashed. Kind of like a sci-fi version of that show, Dinosaurs. Pretty much, yes, yes, um, the, right. So all we find, of course, you know, because everything else was vaporized for within a thousand years of their species, we only have the primitive examples left to spot, that we mm -hmm. found. But anyway. Back to this movie and not this movie that I've never made <laughs> <laughs> or a book I've ever never written. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's not going to be stolen by, you know, Bodo or somebody. Um, <laughs> we'll let them steal it. <laughs> yeah. It's thanks. It's our thanks for uh, sticking it out with us. Yeah. But anyway, um, <laughs> uh, the dragons, of course, make quick work of the planet. But even more interesting, I found was that the destruction wasn't just caused by the dragons. We decided to try to nuke the dragons from the uh, military school of Wile E. Coyote. <laughs> uh, we wound up, of course, killing ourselves. Hmm. Uh, that has left the, all of humanity with very uh, small pockets here and there. Uh, one of them in this castle in like the northern uh, UK... And, um, well, it turns out, well, they're going through a lot of stuff that we're going... This is a really good movie for this year, I felt. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> watching True. this with a 2020 perspective of, like, let's go... You can't keep us here forever. <laughs> Oddly enough, the bulk of the film takes place in 2020. Right. We want to go out and, uh, we want to go and, uh do things and you can't stop us you can't keep us from doing what we want to do but it's like dude there's there's dragons out there and they're gonna fucking kill you yeah but come on you can't keep us here forever it's like oh my god if they start arguing about wearing masks um, I'm out <laughs> I don't know I don't know if I can handle it but uh, yeah so he has this argument in the beginning of the film because they want to go and harvest crops uh, which would have been a valid argument against harvesting them, except when they did go to get them, they seemed pretty damn ripe to me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the problem, of course, with harvesting crops was that the dragons were there waiting for them as if it were some sort of trap, and it was. I don't know how they were planning on getting the crops out from under the nose of the dragons in the first place, but uh, it went to shit. They, they lost some people, and uh, um, Quinn, who they should have named Quint in honor of Jaws, of course, <laughs> although that would have been more Matthew McConaughey's character. This is more, you know, Schneider. <laughs> uh, or Max. Speaking of, um, of McConaughey, 
his character rolls in, um, because I'm kind of wondering, like, how the fuck is Matthew McConaughey going to be in the middle Mm -hmm. of England? But, um, the, he comes in as one of, uh, I guess, like, sort of a ragtag group of whatever's left of the Mm -hmm. U.S. Army, or different branches of the military service, kind of, into one unit, um... And, uh, of course, he wants to go after the dragons. He is an actual dragon slayer. And, um, and of course, he does uh, get to uh, he does get to show off his skills and actually get one dragon out. Um, shames them for, for actually having something to cheer about for the first time in God knows how long. The Americans and then... didn't want to party. I was impressed by the, with it that they didn't go for that trope. <laughs> True. You kind of thought that the, he was going to be like, you know, playing the bongos or something when mm. they uh, came in, but no. Talking uh, about he gets older, but they just keep getting younger. Yeah. <laughs> uh, he he shaves them for celebrating something. Well, I mean, in his defense, they did lose a couple troops. Yeah. I mean, it made sense. And you could see both sides of the argument. Um. However, he decides it is time for them to mount an attack on the single male dragon that they've located in London. And um, they, uh, of course, if you were rational, you would say, okay, well, let's, let's plan an attack. Let's train our guys. Mm-hmm. Let's, let's figure out how we're going to do this. Bring a lot of people. Instead, uh, he pretty much forces people, impresses them Mm -hmm. into service. Not impresses them as in, wow, that's cool, but like presses them into (laughs) service. Right, right. It's It's a function that that, uh, I say we fortunately have not seen much Mm -hmm. of in our corner of the world. Uh, You know, it's something from that unit of the war of 1812 that Mm -hmm. we, (laughs) from years ago that we learned. But, um, so he just, uh, they had, they literally fight over it. And of course, McConaughey being the military guy, uh, pretty much beats, mm-hmm. uh, Quinn's ass. And, well, and uh, Quinn is kind of, you know, not in the best of shape. Um, uh, and you know, McConaughey is all jacked. So. I, I mean, this is kind of a, a good counterpoint to last week's movie because, I mean, how many scenes do they have without shirts? Yeah. <laughs> Not in good shape. He was ripped. Uh, he, he, they were both oh, ripped. Really. Right at the beginning, I forgot about that part. Yeah, there were a couple. There were a couple shirtless bail scenes. Oh, I forgot because I <laughs> I just remember him in the coat and the big sweater. Yeah. Okay, you're right. He was. Um, I forgot. It's just that McConaughey was a, like I think he was a Marine or National well, yeah, he was Guard, military, so he knows how to fight. Yeah, he he knew something about hand to hand combat. Um, mm-hmm. Buzz cut. Anyway, um, mm-hmm. so they they go into uh, London, is an utter shit show, and um, they they have to of course regroup and come back for this one male dragon, and hilarity ensues. Mm. And, uh, by the way, the method by which the dragons expel fire was inspired by two actual animals, uh, the spitting cobra and the bombardier beetle. Um, first, the spitting huh. cobra, you know, ejects it from its fangs, and, and the bombardier spits acid, burning acid, boiling acid, um, from the other end. Um, so, we did a little research on that. Um, the credits were really dramatic for this. You don't often expect to see a dramatic credit sequence. <laughs> um, I don't know. I mean, I didn't notice uh, anything all that out of it. Well, yeah, music, I guess and they had these doves that were kind of flocking and kind of blacking out the screen. And um, the it elevator... was an early two thousands thing, I think. Yeah, I mean... probably. Um, the elevator ride down to the tunnel was probably the scariest thing in the movie for me. Just like vertigo inducing. Yeah, there wasn't much on fright in this movie. No. I mean, I don't think they were going for more of that. It was more or jump scares or suspense or any real emotional investment. Um, the kid joking about smoking only when he was drinking was weird. <laughs> you got this kid who's probably like twelve, and you know he gets to the 
the site and you know he he's allowed to just go down into the tunnel which is weird it's which, very weird yeah the, but but you know one of the one of the guys working there jokes they all know him because he's you know the, the kid of someone who works there and one guy you know jokes about giving offering him a cigarette and then you know his mother says you you smell like smoke because he was just talking to the guy who was smoking and he says you know i only smoke when i drink which <laughs> is a weird thing for a kid to say um yeah. On the positive side for the film, the effects are really good. Even the daytime stuff. The dragons look real. Yes. Um, oh, and of course, you know, the dragon hits when they're down in the tunnel. They have to go up the elevator. His mother dies protecting him. That all is all. Yeah. The mother's got to die. Mm-hmm. And Shout he grows life. up to be Basil Exposition. Um, he grows up to be John Connor. Oh, well, yeah, that too. But, like, right after her death scene, they cut to, you know, 12 years later, and he has, like, five minutes of exposition. Which is really weird, though, because this is six years before he plays... John Connor. John Connor. (laughs) See, you were thinking John Connor or um, Jaws. I was thinking straight up Mad Max. No, this is straight up Terminator. I mean, this is... You could easily substitute dragons for Terminators. That this is, the, I didn't the story. see. See, I didn't see that one. I haven't. But the one salvation is it? You know, I haven't seen it either. But I mean, you know the story from the first two well, movies. Yeah, true, true. Now, I I was just thinking Mad Max. Um, I I also didn't buy his accent, and I know Bell is British, but that can't his... be his natural accent. Uh, I'd say he was good throughout most of it, but I think there were times his accent seemed to have taken vacations. Like they visited <laughs> Scotland, they visited uh, Ireland a little bit, I think, too. I think. I mean, it was it was all over the place. Actually, you talked about movies that you've seen. Uh, during this, <laughs> I have been doing something called a backyard uh, movie scene thing because okay. my in-laws have like a movie screen. Oh, nice! That's a few stories tall, you know, inflated into mm-hmm. their backyard that when they're using it. Nice. And we saw this uh, weekend, Doctor Doolittle. Oh God! <laughs> the Robert Downey Jr. version. Oh, okay, that that's and bad. that motherfucker's accent goes oh, yeah. all over the place. Oh, I mean, really? he does a he does a full Kevin Costner where it's like, wait, what's he saying now? Oh shit! Because I mean. <laughs> Before Marvel, he was a damn good actor. Oh yeah, oh he was he was clearly. I mean, this was a paycheck sticking okay. out of the back pocket <laughs> sort of deal, obviously. But I mean, he, I mean, I swear he went to fucking Jamaica in one part. I mean, he was like, wait, what is he doing? But Bell starts the film with this ac- kind of growling accent that's very northern, and it just doesn't make sense. No. It is fit he him. supposed to be from London? I mean, yeah, I don't, the kid, I don't get it. And the kid at the beginning has, I mean, maybe slightly northern, but a fairly London accent. Yeah. You know, it just doesn't match the kid's That's the thing, is it doesn't match the kid's accent. I think that's why I took issue with it. Um, and then, you know, at one point, Bale and Butler are acting out a scene from Empire Strikes Back. I did like that scene. <laughs> I did get a kick out of that. And they're, they're like narrating it as if it's not. Yeah. They're, you know, they're changing up the dialogue a little bit. Yeah. Although, given their age, if he was like 12 in 2008, wouldn't they have been acting out Phantom Menace or something from that trilogy? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I, I think it would have made more sense if they grew up with that trilogy that they'd be uh, acting out a scene from that. I, I think, I mean, a 12 at that age, you know, you're into all of them. Eh, maybe, yeah. Um, um, yeah, Butler... It's hard to understand how he had a career <laughs> after this. I mean, he was okay. He was kind of the second banana in this. He was um, probably my least favorite actor. When you're being outacted by McConaughey. <laughs> the only one who didn't really annoy me, weirdly enough, was Alexander Siddig. Oh, of course. He's he's always solid. But, uh, yeah. Speaking of Siddig... Um, in an interview with the AV Club in 2015, he said, quote, The only thing I remember about that was the first day, speaking of the movie. Um, the first AD came into the trailer where we were all having our makeup and shit done. And I was like, and he was like, guys, I need your attention, please. And we were like, yeah. And he said, 
Um, Mr. McConaughey is going to arrive on set in about 15 minutes, and I have to give you a directive, which comes from the producers, um, that you are not to call him Matthew or Mr. McConaughey or anything to do with real life. You must call him Van Zan. Van Zan was his character's <laughs> name. And really? even if you meet him outside in the road, even if you meet him in town in Dublin, they shot in Ireland, um, where we were shooting the movie, uh, you must call him Van Zan, And that is exactly what I remember about that movie. Because as the first day you left the building, I shouted rather lamely, and he's got to call me Elvis. But he didn't call me Elvis. In fact, he didn't call me anything. <laughs> yeah, I don't think the two of them even share a scene, really. No, no. Um, or if they do, they're kind of like just, you know, not directly talking to each other. Or I was watching that specifically because I had read that quote. Sedig scenes, except for, you never see him on camera with any of the names. Right. He's kind of on his own in the radio room. Even, you know, he might be talking to them in a couple of scenes, but that could easily be cut around. Um, I don't think he actually, he may not have actually met them. <laughs> right. <laughs> Uh, yeah, call him Elvis. That's great. <laughs> but when McConaughey shows up, um, I I couldn't help expecting Bad to the Bone to play when he sticks his head out of the tank. <laughs> it was just that cliche. Oh, slightly before that though, um, we have the group that you know, slipped out to go gardening. Yeah. Of course, they have to go rescue them. They should have just let them die. Yeah, I kind of expected that that's what they were, were going to do. Just let them yep. you know, but, close the doors on them, you yeah, know. And yeah. I, I, that's really where I thought it was going to go, where they were going to try to get back in and they were just going to have them locked out. Right. Now, they, have, of course, had to go rescue them because they're the good guys. Yeah. I was kind of liking it until the Americans showed up. You know? Um, McConaughey and the others show up and it just kind of brought it down a little bit for me. Well, it is weird that they would, I mean, I would think the first thing you would tell the troops coming in, like, dude, we don't have enough food for us. Right. How are we supposed to support you guys? Right. And then, may, you know, maybe it could have been like, well, we've got food. Yep. <laughs> okay, then come on in. Right. Yeah, that's true. It would have, a little bartering would have been good. Um, that is how that should have went down, yeah. I think. Van Zen, speaking of other movies, did remind me a lot of the Kurgan. I was thinking he was trying to do a Clint Eastwood sort of thing well, there. In, in the character, yeah, it was very Eastwood. But the shaved yeah. head and the axe and the True. Belt, very Kurgan. Um, and I, I really didn't mind seeing the Americans die. Um, although the skydiving scene was nice. Oh, there was always that, you know, free jumping kind yeah. of thing going on. Uh, I thought the the real tension in that, of course, was getting down the triangulation and getting yeah. down the markers. Mm -hmm. That, I thought, was intense. Because <laughs> you really weren't sure who was going to buy it and who was going to actually live in this. It wasn't kind of set. You were kind of... Anything was on the table, you know? Yeah, they could have killed, gone either way. Given that they started with Quinn, you kind of figured he was going to live. True, true, but like out of the the Americans that were there, oh, the Americans, yeah, they all you had of no idea who was going to last and who yeah. wasn't. They were red shirts, um, except for McConaughey, who you know was at least going to make it to the to the climax, you know. Um, but they managed to take down a dragon, and yeah. then I've never been offended by a music cue in a movie until now. <laughs> They take down the dragon, they cut to the castle, they're having a party, because, you know, they've probably never killed a dragon before. And I would think it was the first thing they've had to celebrate in yeah. probably a, at least a decade, maybe. Right. And they're playing Fire by Jimi Hendrix. Love the song. In any other situation, I would appreciate it. But in that moment, it was just so fucking on the nose, I was actually offended by it. <laughs> Well, I just attributed that to, you know, a party DJ yeah, yeah. <laughs> who, um, you know, would think that was clever. And as much as I am in favor of celebrating small victories, I do appreciate that they didn't go with the American party animal cliche. Yeah. Like I said, you could eat, you could see both sides of the argument. Yeah. He's, and I think that's what the, 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 the 
you know, the conflict is there was that uh, Quinn wants to establish life mm-hmm. and and concerned about the future, right? And uh, McConaughey just or whatever the fuck his name was, uh, Van Denton, Van. Uh, wanted you know wanted victory. Mm-hmm. Van Zandt was McConaughey. Yeah, um, yeah, he just wanted to kill the dragons, um, and yeah, Quinn just kind of wanted to live live with them. I guess survive them. Well, yeah, because up until then, he didn't even think it was possible to kill right. one. Right. They'd never seen one get killed. <laughs> and I think the idea of killing the one male, as as far fetched as the idea that there's one male populating all of the dragons, I mean, that doesn't really work logically, but it was kind of a clever angle. I mean,. It's almost, I mean, it's not as bad as, you know, one vial, you know, breaking oh. and spilling out over the entire planet. Yes. I, mean, I just listened to that Johnny Mnemonic episode where we argued <laughs> about Resident Evil. That but was one of them. It's a matter of expectation. You know, I expect <laughs> idiotic shit like that in a Resident Evil movie. It's a fucking Resident Evil movie. That's why I love them. They're idiotic. I mean, I'm in no way defending the science there. They, they're, they're probably was more than just one male, I would venture to guess. But they established that killing the one male ended it, though. They hadn't seen them in years. So, anyway, before then, uh, before we get to the actual ending, um, light, I love the shot of the dragon lighting up the caravan that had been pressed to go to London. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, that, that was pretty intense, too, that scene, where they were just... You could just hear the sounds, and they're like, <laughs> if they're playing they, with this, yeah. like, you know, they're setting us up. <laughs> yeah. If they if they had killed off Van Zen in that scene, it would have added a brain to the movie. That would have been unexpected, yeah. And it would have just been... gotten rid of Van Zen, who I fucking hated. Um, yeah, and it would have just had her come back to right Quinn and them working out the plan to kill the dragon. Right. Um, but also, you probably can't. Couldn't have signed McConaughey to this without. Uh, well, yeah, without him. Having he was the only name him. really recognizable in this. I mean, Bale, of course, had a resume, but mm-hmm. he was never a draw. Right. Bale is a draw if you know who he is. Right. Um, At this point, though, he he wasn't the same name. Oh, that's true. He didn't become that, that in the Batman later. movies, which were a few like, years later. Right. This was like American Psycho. Right. Although he was kind of like yeah, Batman. When was uh, I Batman? Think, I think Batman Begins I, was a little after this. I think Begins was right before this, if oh, I'm not oh, mistaken. Okay. okay. Um, I could be wrong. Because the Batman wrong. movies were really what he gave, what gave him a name in the mainstream. With you know, before this, it was like American Psycho and The Machinist and like stuff you had to be in the film. Yeah. Sorry about that. To appreciate. Um, so I mean, I was a fan, but I, mean, I think. The oh, you're right. Begins was oh five. Yeah, right it was after a little this. after this, and that's when the mainstream discovered him. Yeah. Um. But yeah, if, if he had died, if they killed Van Zandt at that point, added a brain, I, uh, I would add a brain. Um, I did not expect the male dragon to light up the keep after that. <laughs> and I don't mean it attacked. I mean, it fucking took the building down. Oh, yeah. They had to get oh. all the kids out and hide in the in the shelter. Um, they did kill off um, Butler at that point. I'm sure you enjoyed that. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> And then uh, um, uh, Van Zandt comes back, you know, with you know, Alex, his, the, the female lead, and, like, one other person with his tail between his legs says, you were right, you know, you're in charge from now on. Because there was an and, argument earlier where he basically said, Van Zandt said, I lead, you follow. I think that was the point where I really started hating him. <laughs> yeah. But and he the, comes the, back. The thing I hated about uh, Butler's character in this and his acting in this was he was pretty much just doing an imitation of the crazy Irish guy from Braveheart. Yeah, kind of. Yeah, I yeah. can see that. But, the Lord tells me I'm going to make it through this, but you're fucked, you right. know? Yeah. But, um, so Van Zandt comes back, tail between his legs, says, you were right, you're in charge now. They they decided to attack London. And as soon as they get in the tunnel, Van Zandt starts barking orders. <laughs> He just takes over again. Um, 
I loved uh, Quinn spitting out the, you know, what he drank from the flask and saying, it's water. The most <laughs> yes. British thing in the movie. Yes. What the fuck? Why would I drink water? <laughs> and I like the fact that Quinn fucked up and accidentally dropped. I saw that coming. His ex- <laughs> you did? You had to really? have that scene where he, you know, has to run out real fast and grab the thing he dropped and get back behind cover. It's a cliche. I don't think so. Usually, usually the heroes, you know, not that like, oh, I, I fucked up and, and, you know, just dropped the weapon I needed or the talisman that needs to destroy the uh But he wasn't the like the big hero in that way. That was Van Zan. Um who at least they didn't give like a heroic sacrificial ending. He just got Oh burnt. man. I was so afraid that they were going to I, I don't know how many brains I would have taken off if they had done <laughs> this. I was so afraid that Van Zan was going to kill the dragon from inside. Yeah, yeah, I was too. I was so I was like, if that motherfucker comes bursting out of his stomach, yeah. I I'm going to fucking throw my laptop out the window. <laughs> I'm gonna lose my shit if yeah. that's what happens here. No, they just kill him off in a scene where he like misses a shot and the dragon yeah. lights him up, which I liked. Um but Quinn was kind of I mean, shirtless shots aside, he was kind of a nebbish. Well, yeah, he was Bilbo Baggins, you know. So having him drop the arrows made sense. It fit him. Um, And then I almost almost went above middle for this until the very last shot. Because they didn't, they avoided the romantic subplot. (laughs) Until literally the last shot, they show, you know, Quinn and the female lead Alex... And they're talking, and there's kind of they kind of hint at maybe something, but they never confirm. And then they're walking away from the camera in the last shot and holding hands. Yeah, the last shot they had to fucking ruin it. So it wasn't shoehorned in; it was just sort of like, well, he's off doing this now. Mm. <laughs> you could kind of see it coming, though. You know. The, yeah. Oh, the I know. I know. That's part of the problem. Is I saw it coming and getting just kind of. Frobard at the last minute. And she is literally the last woman on Earth, kind of. <laughs> Was she? I, I don't know. There, were, there weren't many. <laughs> I'm just trying to think if any other adult women survived. I mean, there were I kids. Don't, but... Who knows? Yeah. I, I mean, there were so many people fucking killed. I mean, okay, she's one of the last women one on Earth. Yeah. <laughs> um, on the sequels and remakes. Uh, I thought it was a little surprising at the end that they revealed... Or they hinted at this and and not doing it so directly as everything else. That Van Zan sought Quinn out. Uh-huh. That that was the whole reason they were there. Right, because they had had a, a, a settlement there. It was apparently guts was he had heard about, and the mail was in the area. But they sought Quinn out. They went for Quinn first. Oh, right, right, right. Because they they had heard about him, yeah, and they really they do it kind of subtly, where it's just like he always at the end he was like he always knew you'd kill him, mm-hmm. like he always like wait a minute he always way, <laughs> you know it's not something that like just came up like while they're talking on the way to the place or something mm-hmm. like that. No, it means that they they talked about him. Right. Long before this, so they didn't accidentally just stumble upon their castle. Maybe they because went out. he had been keeping a settlement alive. Maybe because he was the one who found the dragon. Because he did get some press for that as a kid. I, I guess the only confusing part about that is why they didn't take his advice more seriously when they did find him <laughs> to well, go through all that trouble, and then he's like, they had to make you know McConaughey toxic masculinity personified. Right, and just you go through all that trouble to find him, and then just yeah, yeah, whatever. Come on, and let's uh, let's kill him. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's like no, no, no. Wait a minute. Uh, you know, he does this, and, and he's like giving the you know scientific you know right. reason for <laughs> how he does things. It's like, but right, then McConaughey uh, just kind of takes charge and fucks everything up. 
So, yeah, sequels and remakes. I mean, obviously there's room for sequel because there could be other dragons out there and they could be repopulating something like that. In a 2002 um, interview, Bell was asked, is there a sequel possibility to Reign of Fire? To which Bell responded, possibly. I told Scott Mooder, who had played my stepson in the movie, um, that he was well positioned to take the sequel from me because of the way the movie ends. Right. It was later rumored that the sequel had been canceled. Yeah, well, because the, the box office you know, bombed. Yeah. In, also in 2002, uh, Kuju Entertainment released a video game adaption of Reign of Fire for PS2, Xbox, GameCube, which received mixed reviews. Could be a fun game. No, I think, I, I think the mistake was, I mean, it was pretty much McConaughey's name alone on this. Mm-hmm. Uh, they needed somebody else's name in there to get people in. I'm not sure how they could have gone and done it. Yeah, I mean, they did try to use uh, Bell's name. I remember they, they mentioned Bell because I was aware of Bell at the time. But, yeah, you know, most people weren't as they established. I pretty much stayed away because I'm like, I'm not going to go see a Matthew McConaughey movie. I well, saw I didn't Contact, see it at the time. I, I, yeah, same. <laughs> but uh, I think I saw it on one of the on you know Showtime or HBO or something years ago. Um, on the brains. On the brains. Like I said, it, it reminded me a lot of Cowboys and the Aliens in that it was remarkably mediocre. Two point five. I had a lot of fun with it. I was uh, pleasantly surprised. I'm going four. Wow, you recommended it. I'm, I'm sure shocked. Um, yeah, right, there were some tense like... scenes. There were some good special effects. Yeah, okay. Uh, the script needed some work <laughs> and some of uh and gerard butler should be uh thrown off the cliff for the uh through for the uh oh i by the actor the who played the crazy by... irishman <laughs> what's that by the actor who played the crazy irishman oh yeah him i was gonna say by the um by the guys that they were fighting in 300 but i okay. messed the joke up though yeah um, shame wow. on me you are notoriously the as you put it one time heavy greater harder greater um and me um that's i'm always surprised when you go that much higher anyway what have we learned uh too bad cameron didn't think of using dragons instead of bad actors as his heavies <laughs> and i learned that americans ruin everything <laughs> well kind of hmm. that's it for rain of fire until next time we'll be continuing this tro- this fantasy trilogy with lady hawk i've never seen it so I'm really curious oh, wow. about it. I haven't seen it in decades. Mm. I don't know how it's going to hold up. Yeah, I'm, I've been. Re- I was reading up on the story. I'm mitigating my expectations, but I'm still looking forward to it. <laughs> Until then, of course, always remember, never forget, wherever you go in life, there you are. There you are. Well,